The third time was the charm for Chris Peterson at Washington. The former Boise State coach who took the Broncos to unreal heights, beating a lot of Power 5 competition during his eight years there in Boise, well, in Seattle, gave Washington similar success. As a matter of fact, even bigger success because Washington got to the college football playoff this past season. A 12-2 record and, of course, a Pac-12 championship. And there's enough ingredients there this season to have Washington repeat as conference champions and possibly get back to that college football playoff. Offense will have a big say-so in that as Jake Browning is back for another year, a signal caller for UW. Now, Browning, he's already thrown for over 6,000 yards in his career, and last year he was sensational. Over 3,400 passing yards, and he tied the Pac-12 record for most touchdowns in a single season. He threw 43, and he was accurate as well. He only threw nine interceptions. Now, one thing that does bear watching for Browning, of course, is that shoulder, which gave him fits during the latter part of the season, and it probably showed a little bit in that Alabama loss as well. I'm not saying that's the big reason why Washington lost, but no question, the bad shoulder uh, did not do wonders for Browning. Did have surgery on the shoulder. In fact, he was limited in spring practice, so should be ready to go, uh, Jake Browning. But to me, Biggest key for Washington offensively will be the ground attack. How big is it? Well, listen to this. There are 12 wins last year. They averaged 225 yards of rushing per game. In the two losses, they averaged a mere 35 yards as Bama in that semifinal game held the Huskies to only 44 yards on the ground. It was even worse against USC. The Trojans held UW to just 27 yards. Can I see what I'm getting at here? Yeah, without that potent ground attack, Washington does become mortal. But a guy that is, you know, just an outstanding superstar, and you're going to see him flourish again, will be Miles Gaskin. Had almost 1,400 yards rushing, had 10 touchdowns, and was used out of the backfield to catch passes. So Miles Gaskin, uh, we'll see what he could do. And uh, LeVon Coleman, the backup, who averaged a breathtaking 7.5 yards per carry. He's a senior. So the ground game is set for Washington. Receivers, though, you not only lost a uh, big-time receiver in John Ross. Of course, Ross this past year in the Combines ran the fastest 40 time in the history of the Combines, 4.22 in the 40-yard dash. And that's something you just can't replace. But receiving-wise, we'll see if uh, guys like uh, Dante Pettis can pick up the slack. Not bad last year, a little over 800 yards in receiving, and had 15 touchdowns. In fact, had 18 touchdowns total for uh, Dante Pettis and was a valuable punt returner. In fact, in his career, has had five returns for score. So he's very dangerous. Speaking of returning, Chris McClaster. Now, this is a guy that will also handle the kickoff returning duties as a receiver in uh, 2016. He played 13 games, started in three of them. And they're expecting big things out of a true freshman named Ty Jones at six feet four inches tall, a tall target for Browning to throw to. In terms of the offensive line for the Huskies, there's a multitude of experience, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. But first, the tight end and Drew Sample, they could use him as a blocker. They could also use him to catch those short passes inside in between the hash marks. He's had 18 total starts in his career, including 11 last season. Drew Sample, a junior. Talking about experience, shoot, I mean, I mean, this guy, he's been around a while. Matter of fact, he was second team all Pac-12 last year. 34 career starts for Coleman Shelton, now entering his senior year. And a junior, Trey Adams, at left tackle. Uh, this guy has had 24 career starts. And at right tackle, Caleb McGarry started every game last year. Caleb McGarry, a junior. So tackles at the center spot, the tight end. You've got to combine 96 starts amongst this foursome. Wow. And we're not even counting a couple of guards who've started a little bit as well. Now, they do lose at guard, though, Jake Eldrenkamp, but you do have a guy by the name of Nick Harris at left guard who played both the left and the right side last year, started a couple of games from both positions. So that's four starts last year and five starts for Andrew Kirkland, the other guard, the right guard. So a combined 105 starts amongst those six. Hey, you can't coach experience, and Washington has plenty of it on the offensive line. I would expect the offense for Washington to continue to put up the numbers. I mean, with the experience they have on the offensive line, with Browning, that shoulder appearing, that it will be fine for 2017. 
plus that lethal ground attack anchored by Gaskin. You got to figure that Washington, again, will put up nice numbers. Last year, uh, they put up 42 points per game, which was tops in the Pac-12 and 8th nationwide. Defensively, man, all they did was dominate in 2016. Even the playoff loss to Alabama, the defense didn't do too bad of a job. They held the Crimson Tide to only two offensive touchdowns. That's saying a lot. This was a defense that a year ago only gave up 18 points per game, which was tops in the Pac-12, and it was eighth overall, and they only gave up 316 yards of total offense, 316 per game as far as total yardage, which, again, was number one in the Pac-12 and 12th in the country. Pretty impressive, and they returned the majority of their starters. Defensive line, this is a team that runs that 3-4 look, and I would expect them, again, to be very tough to run against. Vita Veda. Now, this guy, Vita Veda, Five sacks a year ago at nose tackle. Also, too, had 39 tackles, 340 pounds. He is a huge guy, no question. Defensive tackle, Greg Gaines, not to be confused with the alter ego of Garth Brooks, Chris Gaines. We're talking about Greg Gaines, a junior who had three and a half sacks and 35 tackles in 2016, started every game. And at the defensive end spot for the Huskies, Jalen Johnson, Got off to a bit of a rough start. That's because he didn't play the first three games due to injury, but worked his way into the rotation as the season progressed, even started in the playoff game against Alabama. The linebackers, they're really stacked in this area, especially at inside linebacker Azim Victor. You know, this guy was absolutely sizzling last year, had 68 tackles. Then the unfortunate leg injury early and that loss to Southern Cal didn't play for the rest of the season. But he's back and ready to go along with Keyshawn Bieria. Um, Key Bieria had 41 tackles um, all solo, 68 tackles total. So you bring him back. Outside linebacker returns Connor O'Brien, a senior, who had three sacks and 35 stops. The other linebacker, a bit of an unknown, so we'll see how Amandre Williams does as a redshirt freshman. As you can tell from that fact we just spit out at you, uh, when you're hot, you're hot, and when you're not, well, you know the rest. And the NFL definitely knows Washington defensive talent in this past season. Uh, three secondary players all picked in the second round, both corners in Kevin King and Sidney Jones, and the All-American at safety in Buda Baker. So you got some big shoes to fill in the secondary. But the good news is they've got plenty of experience at least with the safeties. A free safety in Taylor Rapp, who last season as a sophomore caught a lot of eyes with four interceptions, and a strong safety in JoJo McIntosh. Last year as a sophomore, started every game but one and had 67 tackles. But, of course, the corners are maybe the one area of concern. We'll see how Jordan Miller at 6-1 handles one corner. Um, not a starter, but has played in every game these past two years. So that helps. And at the other corner, a guy who has yet to play college football in Byron Murphy, but they expect big things from him, uh, a guy that redshirted last year. And pretty much that was the right decision by Chris Peterson to redshirt the guy because of how loaded Washington was at that corner position. In terms of the special teams, Tristan Viscano, full-time punter a year ago, 41 yards per boot, and looks like you're going to be able to add the title as full-time place kicker as well. Seldom place kick last year, but looks like right now he's going to play both positions. The schedule for Washington, I'm telling you what, they're going to have a pretty damn good shot at going undefeated. First of all, the non-conference schedule is not scary at all. There is the opener, cross-country to Rutgers, but Rutgers is just damn awful. It's that simple to say. Conference opener, it's a rematch of last year's Pac-12 championship game against Colorado. Now, Colorado won't be bad offensively, but defensively they lost nearly everybody, so I would expect the Huskies to win by double digits. Oregon State the following week, but the Beavers I don't think are there yet as far as being a quality program. And the schedule, the last seven games, that's right, the last seven, five of them are at Husky Stadium. And that includes UCLA in late October. They'll get two weeks to get ready for that. The toughest month looks like it will be November. Three of the final four, though, in Seattle. 
but not the November 10th game on a Friday night at Stanford. That's going to be the toughest game of the year. The Cardinal, I think, will be pretty good. And they close out the year with Washington State. This is the game that decided last year's Pac-12 North Championship in which Washington had their way with the Cougars. Vegas has Washington projected to win 10 games. That's high. I've got Washington projected to win 11. There will be a stumble along the way, but I do think the Huskies will win the Pac-12 North, and I think they'll win it with flying colors. And I think that a showdown with USC, who they don't play in the regular season this year, will be inevitable for the Pac-12 championship. I'll have my prediction on who will win the Pac-12 later in the month, the latter part of the month, the last week of the month on my college football playoff prediction show. That's my look at the Huskies. We'll see you next time.